Late last week, I travelled to Detroit, Michigan to see the official reveal of the Bollinger B1 and Bollinger B2 electric SUV and pickup truck. Build as no-nonsense, go-anywhere work vehicles, the B1 and B2 are the antithesis of much of the rest of the auto industry, putting function over form and practicality over connectivity gadgets and doodads. Designed from the ground up as a class three truck, these two vehicles are expected to enter into production in the next year or so and enter into a market that is currently not really served by any other maker. Okay, yes, I know. Tesla is promising to unveil its pickup later this year. Rivian is bringing its R1T and R1S to market in the next year or so. So too is apparently Fisker. And there are also pickup offerings on the way from Ford, Chevy, Atlas, and a handful of smaller companies. But Tesla and Rivian's pickups are likely to be lifestyle vehicles rather than work vehicles. And we've not really heard a whole lot from those other companies yet. For now, Bollinger does seem to be the only automaker working on trucks specifically designed for a hard life, be that on a farm, a work site, or an off-road trail. And one of its marketing slogans of no screens, no plastic is most certainly different to every other modern plug-in car today. So let's take a quick look at what we know of both of these trucks, as well as what we can expect from them in the future, based on a chat I had with Bollinger CEO, Robert Bollinger, last week at the launch event. Before I go any further, a little apology. I did film an interview with Robert at the event, but the sound from it wasn't very good due to the large amount of background noise and the limited amount of equipment we had at the event. It was just me in attendance. I mean, just listen to this. I'm going to try for a new interview with Robert in LA at the LA Auto Show this November. I think a great place to start with a B1 and B2 are the origins of these two vehicles. As Robert explained to me last week, he and some of his team got together and built the truck they were wanting to drive. Robert noted that there were no trucks that fitted his needs on the farm he owned in the Catskill Mountains of New York State. So he helped build the company he wanted to make the truck he wanted. Identical underneath, the B1 and B2 are designed as dual motor all-wheel drive trucks with the same chassis and drivetrain in both. They share the same 120 kilowatt hour battery pack, which should be good for around 200 miles of range per charge. Their four-door form factor, I was told, was chosen at first partly out of necessity to get those massive battery packs integrated between the chassis under the vehicle floor in carbon fiber boxes. The length of a four-door body makes most sense to achieve that. Eventually, a two-door version might happen, but not until battery density improves. Both the B1 and B2 have a pair of motors, developing a total of 614 horsepower and 668 pound-feet of torque. Together, they make both trucks do the stoplight sprint in 4.5 seconds and go on to an electronically limited top speed of 100 miles per hour. Although, that is really not what either vehicle is about. They are day-to-day -day practical trucks. Those looking at the B1 and B2 may see a lot of the original Land Rover in them, and I guess that's fitting given that these are work vehicles and the original Land Rover was designed as a farm vehicle. And at the launch event, I joked with a fellow automotive journalist that the original Land Rover was dead. Long live the Land Rover in the B1 and B2. But just as the original Land Rover had neat features like a power takeoff to run farm machinery, yeah, I actually ploughed a field with an original Series 1 Land Rover once, so too does the Bollinger B1 and B2 have some neat practical features up their aluminum sleeves. While the interior is very utilitarian, the dash is basically a series of gauges and dials, and even the windows are manual slide affairs rather than the electrically operated ones you find in most vehicles, the actual load carrying capabilities of both trucks are pretty impressive. In addition to a mid gate that folds flat into the floor of the truck bed and the removable rear bucket seats make the whole load bay flat, the best known feature of Bollinger's trucks is the passed through door, allowing large items to be passed through the vehicle cabin and out through a hatch in the front firewall into each of the vehicle's frunks. In the case of the B2, a piece of 16 feet wood can be loaded into the truck, passing from the rear bed through to the cabin and into the frunk without needing to put the rear tailgate down. 
The B1 has a slightly shorter load carrying capability because it's shorter overall than the B2, despite having the same basic chassis front of the C pillar, but it's still able to use that hatch to haul far larger items than any other similarly sized truck. When it comes to load carrying, up to five and a half thousand pounds can be carried in the rear of both vehicles, while they will also be able to tow up to seven and a half thousand pounds. And while other SUVs and pickup trucks may focus on more creature comfort things inside, both Bollinger trucks are designed to be hosed down with no damage to the inside. It all plays into the idea that these trucks are most likely going to be used on farms, by the military, corporate customers and independent contractors. The quad socket 15 kilowatt onboard mains inverter for powering tools and other things from the rear of the truck in the middle of nowhere just highlights that fact even more. Driving off-road, the B1 and B2 are said to have some pretty impressive handling thanks to a low center of gravity. There's 15 inches of standard ground clearance, 10 inches of wheel travel, and a variable 10 to 20 inches of ground clearance if you make use of the truck's variable suspension. There's also inboard anti-lock vented brakes, something that's found in serious off-roaders like the famous Humvee military vehicles. It's worth noting too that each wheel has its own geared axle hub, offering a high-low ratio gearbox. This helps with low off-speed road movements as well as heavy towing work. In the last couple of days, I've noticed people complain about the B1 and B2's design and the lack of creature comforts, as well as what people say is an unimpressive range given the battery pack capacity. But the B1 and B2 they both do have quick charging capability as standard. They're meant to be for people who want to drive off-road and work off-road in a variety of environments without burning any fossil fuels. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to drive the B1 or B2, but I can't wait to see them up close and personal outside of this launch event. And when I do, if I do, I will of course share it with you right here. What do you make of the Bollinger B1 and B2? Do you want a workhorse similar like this on your farm or in your company? Do you have a job that requires rugged off-road capabilities with no-nonsense interiors? Will you buy one? And although we don't have a price yet, how much would you pay to get one? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.